Hey guys, welcome back to Tony Zatus. In this video, I'll be showing you how to use Keeper Password Manager. But before we start, hurry up and check out our latest software just under this video. So let's get started. In this case, how do we start using Keeper Password here? In this case, the first thing we need to do here is we need to actually uh, go to their official website, which is going to be keeperscurity.com. Now from their official website, what we need to do is we need to try their product for free. So they offer a free trial that you could use for yourself so, so that you'll know if uh, Keeper here is the right product for you. Now, by the way, if you're going to go to pricing here, we should be able to see pricing for business and enterprise, personal and family, as well as for student. Now in this case, choose the most uh, compatible for you. Like for example, if you just want to use this for personal and for your family, you could use personal here and it's going to give you how much is actually worth it or worth currently it's worth around 4.58 australian dollars and uh, for family it's 10.08 a month now if you want to buy it just click on buy now but for now let's go ahead and click on try it for free at the top right of the screen and from here we want to use it for personal and family let's go and click on get protected now what we need to do next is we need to enter our email here. In this case, we'll get a 30-day free trial. In this case, let's go ahead and enter our email. Click on try for 40, 30 days. And from then on, it should redirect us to another page. But in this case, we now need to basically create our account. In this case, let's go ahead and click on the option here, which in this case, we have email address. Let's click on next. And from here, we need to set a master password. In this case, we also need to agree to Keeper's Terms of Service or Use. In this case, if you want to read that, just click on the appropriate link. So in this case, let's go enter our password. Now, on the next page, it's now going to ask us to enter our verification code. In this case, let's go open up Gmail here and get our verification code. So typically, you will be able to receive it in the, your inbox here. So in this case, let's just look for it. So in this case, you could either look into your inbox or you could also look into your spam mail just in case it's actually there. As you can see, the keeper email is in my spam folder. Let's go ahead and visit this one. And from here, it's going to say create account. So in this case, let's go ahead and click on the option or basically copy the code or verification code here. Go ahead and go back into uh, keeper. Just click on verify. Now from here, it should create our account. And as you can see, we are now inside keeper. Now, in this case, how do we start using it? Well, first things first is we need to familiarize ourselves with the UI itself. So this is the default UI here, which includes our vault. So in this case, at the top left, if you click on the tree bar icon here, this will actually expand or minimize our drawer. Now, vault here will actually uh, give us uh, the option to view our contents or the records that we have right now. So we have three options that we could create here. First is we could create records. So that includes passwords, payment cards, and more. So details or any notes that you want to store. You could also create folders here or subfolders to organize your records. Now, also, you could create your own vault. Like for example, if you want to create a vault just for you or a vault just for work and whatnot, you could go ahead and do that. So first things first, let's go and create our vault. Let's go and click on create new. And from here, we want to uh, basically uh, create our vault here. So at the top left, you also have the option to create your record folder, share folder, or generate password here. So in this case, let's go and create, maybe I want to say, I want to create a folder first. In this case, uh, the uh, full the vault that we have right now is the default default uh, vault that we have right now. So in this case, let's go ahead and enter the uh, folder name here. So let's just say there's going to be a test folder, but you can name this in any way you want. Let's go ahead and click on create. Now, within this folder, so you could contain items that inside of your folder. You can even create further of folders within uh, inside the folder that we just created. So just click on create new here, click on folder again, and you want to select whether you where you want to store it. Now, if you choose my vault here, it will store, you, store it in your vault itself, but you could also choose this folder here, just choose here and enter the name itself. Now, within that folder, we now need to basically create our record. Let's go and click on record. Now, from here, we want to choose the uh, type of record type. So as you can see, there's going to be a lot of uh, different records that you could add here. So for now, maybe we want to store either a address, bank account, and a payment card. But you could also store like databases, driver license, contacts, general, or even just files that you want to store here. You could go ahead and do that. So for now, let's just choose address. Now from here, maybe I want to say this is going to be my home. From here, click on next. 
Now in this case, at the right side, you should be able to uh, basically start creating your records. So that includes the address. So let's just say this is going to be address one, and this is going to be address two. Now in this case, what we need to do next is we just need to uh, basically add all the details required here, like city, state, or province, uh, zip, postal code, country, even add attachments. And if you want to add custom fields, you can even add those. Like for example, you want to add a field for a date, address, a multi-line text, or even just a simple URL or a security question or answer here. Also, if you want to add a hidden field, you could go ahead and do that as well. Now, in this case, if you want to self uh, add a self-destruct here, so what does it do? So it creates an expiration one-time share link for this record. So the record will be deleted from your vault after the specified time or five minutes after the recipient opens the link. Now, for example, if you want to add a expiry on your record here, you could set them up for one week or one hour, 30 days or 90 days. Now, you could also delete this one if you want to. Now, in this case, what we need to do is we just need to fill out the details and just click on save at the top right, and that should save our current record. Now, if you want to create a, for example, let's create a new record here. And from here, maybe I want to say this is going to be a login now. So let's just say this is going to be for Facebook. Now, in this case, going to click on next. And from here, we just need to enter our email, the password that we want to use for our account. Oh, and as well as the web address itself. So since this is going to be Facebook, let's just type in facebook.com here. And once you actually open it up, let's go ahead and copy the whole link. Let's go back in here. From here, let's go ahead and enter our URL as well as our email and our password. Now, in this case, you could also, like for example, if you're just creating an account or you're just getting started, you can even generate a password here. So if you click on this one, it's going to automatically create a new one. So in this case, you should be able to copy it as well view the password itself. You can even choose uh, what uh, type of this one, like password or passphrase, even choose how long it is. Does it contain lowercase, uppercase numbers, or symbols? This case is going to click on cancel here, but again, if you're just creating a new account, this is where you'll be you'll be able to create secure passwords for you. Now, once you're done, you could even add attachments, add custom fields again, add self-destruct, and even add two-factor code here. In this case, you can either scan. So in this case, you'll be able to scan. It's only view on Keeper desktop application, which you can download from the website. So in this case, the scan feature here will be uh, only be available via the desktop app here, but you could also upload them if you want to. And even manual entry here if you want to set that up. But in this case, you need to provide the insurer, the account, the secret key, algorithm, digits, and token period here if you want to. Now, in this case, you could also add notes if you want to, but once you've added all the details, just click and save at the top, right? Now, in this case, once you uh, successfully uh, basically start using the Keeper here, you could also install the app or extension for Keeper. Let's go and click on install here. And from here, that should actually redirect us to the Keeper here. Just click on add to Chrome and add the extension so that we'll be able to access Keeper really easily via our browser. Now, in this case, it's going to exit this one, but once it's actually installed, it should pop up this one. So the top right here is going to ask us to pin our extension here. So we'll be able to just click on it and just search for records or even easily access certain records like your uh, Facebook or your home address here or whatever login that you want to access. Now, in this case, you also have the identity and payments here. So you should be able to see like personal info, payment card section here. So this is a special section for your account. Well, in this case, you will be able to keep your payment cards. Now you have the phone numbers, like phone number and address here if you want to add them, usernames if you want to. This is going to be your personal uh, information or your identity. Now, let's add a payment card here. Just give an example. Let's go ahead and go to our payment or add, create new. And from here, let's just say payment. From here, let's go and click on next. And we just need to provide all the details. Like for example, I'm just going to provide these numbers here and the expiration date is going to be at this one. And also the security code. Let's just say one, two, three and car holder name, the pin code, address, and whatnot. So again, you can add the following options like attachments, custom fields, and self-destruct. Let's go and click on save. Now, since we actually added that, as you can see, it's now outside. 
Now you could drag this into the folder if you want to. So it's going to say move the test folder, uh, move to the test folder. Let's go and click on move. And that should move our uh, details or our, our record into the, that folder. Now this is going to be a drag drop option. So if you want to move it out, you could go ahead and drag it outside. If you click on the three dotted icon here, you have the edit record info if you want to share this one or one time share if you want to uh, share this for one time only you could even set add this to your favorites set this default card change your color if you want to the first up let's just add a grid on it click save since now it has that color now in this case when we go to our identity payments here you should be able to see your uh, identity payments again you could add your payment cards here in this case you can add hard title like what we did before so in this case is going to be your general information, like personal information. So this will be used whenever you're uh, basically uh, signing up or just basically uh, using other websites. So this is your uh, identity. Also have payment cards here. Also we have security audit here. It's going to give you some audit on your security. How you how strong is your records? Are there any reused passwords? Your password strengths and last changes and whatnot. Also have breach watch here. In this case, it will actually alert alert you if your username or your password actually matches, and they will actually uh, alert you if those uh, occurrences actually happen. Also have delete items if you want to recover some delete items from your uh, trash bin. But yeah, so those are the basics on how to use Keeper here, and that's about it. So if you found this video helpful, hit the like and subscribe button, and watch our next video.